know that over a hundred years ago, a female physician in Italy, in fact, the first female physician in Italy, laid the groundwork for what most of our preschool children do in their schools, or a lot of it. And yet some of her great ideas uh, that are over a hundred years old have been forgotten or very few people implement them, um, particularly in the United States. So I want to talk to you today about probably the, the things that are most dear to my heart that this person, who I'll mention in a minute, created. She laid a simple path to reading development, and I'm going to talk about the three simple steps that Maria Montessori put in place to lead young kids to become readers. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about uh, Maria Montessori and uh, what she lays out for all sorts of young kids as a path to reading. But I don't know if you knew some of these interesting things about her life. In the turn of the last century, Montessori was um, preparing to be a physician, a female physician in Italy, in fact, the first. And uh, there was it was hard to probably to become a physician in Italy. In fact, her, even her own father did not want her to pursue that path. So she's a woman, she was a woman with lots of guts and she was studying psychi uh, psychiatry and pediatrics and she got concerned about some low-income children in the slums of Rome who were fairly neglected. Um, people thought, well, they just don't have potential, we'll just ignore them. So, um, you know, they didn't say that they ignored them, but educationally speaking, they were almost being ignored and she had a different idea and she sat, sat about to um, see what could be done and she studied these kids gave them opportunities noticed what they liked and didn't like and what helped them focus and what helped them learn and she adapted her um, environment over time to suit them and they became able to pass the state test after two years I believe of this type of support and people were blown away by it and she became famous um, and people started adopting her methods and of course she kept adapting them because she was uh, mostly a researcher and curious about what was the best technique. So I want to share with you about the three um, basic steps that she laid out for Montessori teachers to pass on to their um, students so that those kids could learn to read quickly. With number one in her path to becoming a reader. She said, let's start by tuning kids' perception into to sounds, individual sounds. The first, one of the first lessons, a pre-reading lesson, if you will, is let's notice the beginning sounds in words. So she would maybe lay out a few objects, two, maybe one, maybe two, depending on the child's age, and say, I spy something that begins with mmm. Maybe she would have a mitten, a small mitten. Uh, and so the child would, be tuned in to the object which of course hands-on manipulatives they love and then the teacher drawing the attention to the sounds and words so beginning sound with a game like I spy I spy with my little eye something that begins with the sound mmm so it would begin with objects first and then they would gradually transition to just something in the environment maybe one object initially and then two then three and then again later on to the environment it would start with beginning sounds and then move on to middle and ending sounds, usually in probably short words. Yes. This is tuning the kids into um, hearing the sounds and words. It's phonemic awareness. In fact, phonemic awareness wasn't even a term when Montessori, um, by the time she'd even passed away. But she knew by observation, they already knew language, they knew um, words, so let's tune them into what they hear in those words and that will help them connect it to print. She was laying the foundation for the alphabetic principle. So that's number one in her path is perceiving the sounds in words. One great way to do it is through that game called I Spy. Uh, number two, well then she started teaching them letter sounds, not letter names because the letter sounds help them to decode. So again, 100 years ago, she's giving the kids sounds like mm and b and t and a. She's not saying first M and B. So there would be objects again, like the mitten and the mop. Um, and the students would have a, an M and they would be matching that sound with those objects. So they would start to associate that sound mm, with that symbol, the letter M, and then those objects would be a way of playing a game for the kids. And they would, in, internalize those letter sounds. So step two was hearing the sounds. 
What's interesting about this is that research actually indicates that um, letter names are highly correlated with early reading achievement. And I think this is a little bit of confusion about what's possible versus what is current. It is true that currently the way our culture indoctrinates children, it really indoctrinates them, maybe, not necessarily, you don't have to think about it in a negative way, but it teaches them letter names. So if you've been taught a lot of letter names you, and you're learning it, you are in an environment that's prepared you for literacy and you will probably figure out how to read more likely anyway than a child who's not been taught any letter names or letter sounds. So the research is really showing us the kids who are ahead because of education are going to stay ahead, which is kind of a no-brainer, but it's not testing whether letter names versus letter sounds do better. But we do have some studies that show that letter sounds um, provide a rapid um, entree into decoding and that sound symbol based decoding is the foundation of learning to read. So uh, my experience and some of these studies lead me to say pretty confidently that letter sounds are the way to go, but I do acknowledge that the research is conflicted and I believe it's a matter of it being correlational, like showing these things go together. So yes, it does go together that because we are already teaching letter names all the time, our kids who are learning all the letter names, they do perform better early on. So we have Montessori Simple Path to Reading number one. It was tuning kids into the beginnings, middle and ending sounds and words. Um, number two, it was teaching them the letter sounds. And then number three, it was starting the teaching of reading by spelling. So the first lesson that kids get other than the isolated letter sounds or the isolated perception of sounds and words is let's make a word. Let's make a word like cat or sat or um, nap. And so the, the teacher says, hmm, what do you hear at the beginning of sat? And the students have the letters in front of them. They called it the movable alphabet and they are um, alphabet letters that are um, you know, tactile and in the shape of the letter and the children move those letters out on a rug. It's very engaging. They might use a picture to go with it, put out a picture of a cat and then pull out the sounds, uh, sound by sound. The teacher's usually working with them and the teacher says, okay, great. What do you hear at the beginning of sat? So first the child identifies the sound back to where she's, the teacher started, um, the, the whole pre preparation for the child. And then the child then picks the S from the box, the movable alphabet, and lays it down. And then the teacher keeps going through that. What's the next sound you hear in sat? So the movable alphabet lesson is really a spelling lesson first. The purpose is not to teach how to become a speller, although that's certainly a huge corollary, but it's basically doing a couple of core things. It's teaching the alphabetic principle that those sounds you already are hearing in words, they are a code for sounds and they will um, help you to figure out how these funny symbols relate to words you already know. So it's just kind of revealing a process that the student discovers on his or her own about how our language works. And the kids are through the moon when they get to this lesson. It's so exciting. And in the context of the lesson, they're learning the alphabetic principle, they're learning phonemic segmentation, they're also learning the letter sounds in more depth. So this lesson, this is traditional Montessori lesson, is very similar to what we do here at Reading Simplified. We do a modified version of it called Build It, but the principles are very similar. So those are the top three, or the main three ways that Montessori paved the foundation for kids to become readers. Number one, um, first preparing the way by having them hear the individual sounds and words. That's phonemic awareness even before it was labeled. Number two, it's also teaching the letter sounds and not the letter names. And number three, it is starting the teaching of reading by spelling. So the kids start to spell, break down the words, and when they do that, they see how the code works. They see the alphabetic principle.